good shape, all right? Take care away. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Juha Klemola, coming from uh, Nokia. So uh, uh, I have been talking uh, these topics in uh, Telco's working group previously, but um, now it makes sense to come here since we have uh, more something uh, real to share. And um, that's why I'm here. So uh, today, what I, I have uh, topics, uh, I will talk about uh, our uh, kind of uh, OCP uh, seismic enhancements. So um, we, we have uh, uh, planet kind of a new uh, uh, seismic kit to be compliant with OpenRack version 2. Um, then uh, we are highlighting our kind of a minus 48 uh, uh, power feed option for the OpenRack version 2. Uh, then a couple of additional items, uh, uh, next steps, what we are looking for is the liquid cooling and the high voltage DC uh, uh, options. Yeah. Okay, um, for the seismic uh, uh, OCP rack, so I, I talk in a telcos working group, but the reasoning behind, I don't talk any more that, but uh, what was the baseline was that uh, we take the NEPS uh, telco spec and um, we put the baseline requirement so that uh, with a single rack, we can uh, fulfill uh, the zone two uh, with, um, 850 kilogram IT load inside. And uh, two racks bait together, we uh, put the requirement that we need to fulfill zone four criteria. And um, also, it, uh, the baseline was that it must be uh, compatible with OpenRack version two, and uh, also that we don't ruin the kind of serviceability idea of the uh, OCP. So toolless, toolless design. Um, <clears throat> and um, we end up kind of like a seismic kit. It's an optional kit for the open rack. So um, in the cases of non-seismic areas, we don't need that. Uh, so it not, does not increase the cost of the rack. Uh, uh, so that's, that's the uh, basic approach. Okay, now it's there's something wrong. It's uh, present. Uh, sorry. Oh, okay. It changed automatically. Okay. No, no problems. Oh, wobbling around. Uh, yeah. If you can do. Yep, I can. The, the, Is that where you want to be? Uh, okay. Let's continue from here. Okay. Okay. It changed again. Okay. Um, what is included? Uh, so uh, we have a, a optimal uh, kind of a quick release uh, bracing beams. Uh, we are utilizing the existing uh, uh, threads in um, rack front surface. So there's a M M10 uh, uh, bolt holes, uh, and uh, we bolt at the pin in, in, in that uh, hole and. Uh, the beam over that and uh, lock it down using uh, quick release uh, clevis locking beams. So it's uh, efficient and cheap. Uh, then what is other pieces are needed uh, anchoring bracket and the design is so that it's outside of the rack. Uh, so when you're installing a rack on the data center, you don't need to make a kind of precise measurement of the drilling holes, so you can uh, just dr uh, drill the holes uh, through the bracket directly to the concrete and uh, put an expansion bolts on. Uh, okay, what else? If you change. So um, the part of the solution is that uh, we also um, fix the cubby on the place. Uh, we are utilizing the existing uh, bolt holes in a, in a cubby. And, uh, but what is slightly different that uh, in a rack uh, post, uh, we uh, changed the 
uh, round hole, uh, there's no any more round hole, but uh, instead of M4 threads in a post. So we bolt them uh, copy on the place using uh, four M4 uh, screws. Okay, next please. Uh, okay, what was the result? So um, currently uh, we simulated the uh, design. So um, the uh, first case was that uh, what we have a baseline regulament. So two racks baited together and uh, we run the NEPS, uh, uh, NEPS 4 grid area uh, seismic simulation and uh, it was easily passing, passing the neutral frequency as well as, as well as the displacement grid areas in both directions. Okay, um, next one. Uh, we run also um, the John 4 um, simulation for the signal rack and um, according to the simulation it's just past that. Uh, so we are ordering the kind of, kind of baseline requirement even. Uh, so we meet the seismic uh, John 4 even with the signal rack. Uh, <coughs> the, in the beginning of next month we are running the real testing in a seismic lab. So we are very confident at that phase that we are passing that. Um, okay, next one, please. Uh, okay, then. Um, okay, if you move backward, sure. still here. Yeah. So um, I, I was about to say that, uh, okay, we are going to release the submission about this uh, kit for the uh, uh, working group to review. So that's the next step to write that down. But uh, we want to uh, wait um, uh, also the results from the real uh, kind of seismic test. So there may, might be some, some changes still. <coughs> okay, next one. Okay, now next topic was uh, minus 48 uh, uh, power feed. And uh, that it was kind of important missing link in a kind of telco use space. So, uh, so existing uh, central office uh, power feed systems are still there and uh, now we are starting to deploy the OCP in there. So uh, we need to have the, that uh, at the beginning at least that power feed option. So um, uh, again, our kind of design approach that it, uh, the power self is compatible with OpenRack version 2 and uh, we are following the European telecommunication standard to fulfill that the power feed. Uh, <coughs> and um, also uh, we have a different uh, kind of redundancy schemes to, to support different cases. So small deployments, uh, dual and redundant and uh, large scale deployments, uh, N plus one schemes. Okay, next one, please. Okay, um, here is the kind of uh, block diagram of the of the design. So um, <coughs> we have a dual feed PDUs on top of rack. Um, they using uh, for the battery lines uh, uh, dual hole lugs, uh, <coughs> and uh, the capacity we, what we have with the uh, 200 redundant PDUs, we have a 17.4 uh, kilowatts per rack and uh, N, N plus one, uh, so five plus one PSU, 25, 25 kilowatt. Um, the PDU uh, in the top of the rack, uh, there's a cost circuit breakers and outputs also for the switching gear. Uh, so Ethernet switches, so we have a uh, 48 volt PSUs in the switches. So uh, the PDUs are also feeding the uh, Ethernet switch. So in a case of power loss, uh, um, also uh, the switches are under the redundant uh, power feed. So no loss in a networking gear. Um, <coughs> uh, also in the next step is that we are planning to hook also the uh, 
uh, Ethernet switches directly to the uh, 12 volt to the bus bar. So we have a, uh, also clip option in there already, but um, that's come later. Uh, so uh, we have still uh, the rack bus bar in this phase at 12 volt. So this is only uh, uh, feed option from the uh, data center. So conversion happens in a, in a power self. You can see the picture in the bottom that converts the minus 48 to the 12 volt bus bar uh, in a OCP rack. Okay. That, that was the uh, minus 48. And um, next, um, we have a couple of study items. So um, uh, to overcome the issues also that uh, uh, there's a lot of the central office locations that they are uh, um, cooling limited. And we have a kind of a quite high power rack. So uh, we are also developing the kind of uh, liquid cooling option for those uh, cases. So when the customers has no chance to build a new data center, so uh, we can uh, deploy the OCP also the cooling limited locations. And uh, the idea was that uh, we introduced a kind of real door cooler. So it's a radiator behind the OCP rack. Again, uh, kind of optional piece. So um, in cases if you need it, you are uh, bolting the uh, radiator behind. And uh, there's a kind of uh, coolant uh, uh, circulation, either uh, uh, top of the, uh, the rear door cooler or bottom of the rear door cooler to the side cooling system. Uh, and uh, the idea was that, that the, uh, uh, the radiator, we can open that for the service uh, ac actions. Uh, so it's, it's really uh, still uh, um, allow the full service ability of the OCP. Uh, okay, next please. And uh, then uh, another thing is that um, uh, we, we are go, uh, starting to study to uh, 400 volt uh, DC uh, power feed option as well. Uh, <coughs> the, um, uh, the rectifier part uh, exist uh, and um, currently we are uh, looking what kind of connectors we can use to hook up to the, the data center, the high voltage DC. And, uh, and here is uh, one option that we are uh, maybe proposing to use is the kind of Anderson uh, connectors that are used for the DC, DC connectors. So we are using these as a, also in a, some cases in a 48 volt connections at the side. So, but this is really also that I would like to hear the feedback. So um, if, if there's any comment, what kind of connectors we like to use in a site. So I'm happy to hear that. And um, okay, basically we can use the three phase connector as well, but uh, the limiting factor is the kind of uh, neutral pin uh, current uh, carrying capability. So, um, so that's why we are thinking something different uh, in here. Okay. And um, if you could, next slide. So, um, we have that uh, seismic kit and uh, we are going to sub make a kind of a specification uh, for the review from that. Uh, we have a, a minus 48 uh, volt option, you know, open rack. Uh, and uh, these, all this stuff is uh, 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 in our booth in uh, C18, uh, you know, in a hall. So you can uh, step by and look that. And um, what we have in the next steps are really the uh, liquid cooling and uh, 400 volt DC options as well. So thank you. If you have any questions.
questions, I'm happy to answer now. So if nobody else has one, I've got one. Okay. Um, so you, you're showing that you're doing the, uh, the seismic testing. Yeah. Um, and you've added in some screws in the side of Cubby, right, to constrain Cubby into the rack frame. Uh, yes. To kind of help, help with uh, keeping Cubby in. Um, have you also looked at um, what you need to do to keep the individual IT nodes inside of Cubby? Is that something, that's something that you've looked at? Uh, so keep what? Like the servers or, or the sleds inside of Cubby. Yeah, it doesn't interfere that. So we are using flathead screws. So okay. it's, it's uh, going to current Cubby design perfectly. So Okay. Yeah, so that's the screw that holds uh, Cubby right into the rack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, also it's uh, it's make the in the side to side uh, yeah. uh, more stiffness. The, yeah. The stiffness. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, um, that's the kind of idea. Okay, but of course uh, it's only optional kit, so um, you don't need to uh, utilize those screws if not it's yeah, not if seismic is not needed. Okay. Yeah, so I think there's already screws in that. I think there's like a M6 holes in there now, but they're not threaded. They are, if I recall, 5.5. Uh, yeah, 5.5 for an M6. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess that's something we can talk about, how much that would cost, whether we want to you know, change the current specification, specification. from a clearance hole to a, a threaded hole. It, yeah. it adds some cost to the base rack, but at least maybe allow us to all use a more similar rack frame. But it's something else we could talk to, uh, talk to the rest of the community about making that yeah. Whether we want to make that change or not. Yeah. So that point was uh, pointed out in my presentation that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I highlighted the different color that <laughs> changed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any, any other questions real quick? We got a few more. Okay. Here. Um, what are some of the factors that are driving for the minus 48 volt and the 400 volt uh, DC power? So uh, as I said, uh, minus 48 is uh, is because there's an existing infrastructure in a telcos. They have a, um, in a central office location, they have a power feed system already. And they don't want to uh, kind of replace those at this point. Uh, so that's the kind of driving. So customers are wanting that. <laughs> uh, and uh, okay, 400 volt. So that's, that's another thing that, um, okay, minus 48 uh, at the kind of data center level, it's not uh, kind of uh, quite efficient. So there's a lot of losses, high currents. So um, the telcos are in some cases moving to the 400 volt distribution. So the losses at the data center level is uh, uh, much better than in a, in a minus 48. Thank you. Uh, the architecture for the 400, would that be a, a centralized distribution at 400? And then in the OCP rack, it would go like 400 to 12 and 48? It, yes, exactly yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, because in, a, um, in OCP, the orange has to submit the specification, so there's also uh, describe how, how they are doing in the data center level, so following exactly that idea. Okay, thank you. Yep. Oh, we got okay, one more. One more. One. Too early, too early. <laughs> Just wondering if you'll be releasing the design of the rear heat exchanger into the community. Um, we don't have any plans to do yet, so no decision either or. So, <laughs> but uh, we are studying, studying at this phase, so that's, that's still totally open. Anybody else? Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Joe.